Hi, Neil McPherson here, Worksworth Gunroom. For your initial amusement, drill round. Slam fire tastic. You may well be here if you've not just uh, picked up from the YouTube channel, maybe you've been watching the YouTube channel. Otherwise you might have come here from a link from the shop's Facebook page. And the reason for that is that um, I put some adverts on the shop Facebook page of some things that we've got in, um, in the shop that people might wish to buy or share with their friends who might wish to buy them. And um, Facebook um, took those adverts down and uh, banned them. Which is kind of interesting because although I've printed it off here, um, I don't expect you to be able to read that from, from the camera, so I'll put it online. But um, in the time-honoured fashion of uh, people doing death by PowerPoint, notwithstanding the words being in front of you, and I'm sure you can read, I'm going to read it out anyway. Are firearm sales allowed on Facebook? The purchase, sale or trade of firearms, ammunition and explosives between private individuals isn't allowed on Facebook. It's their company, they can do as they like. Um, they then state, firearm shops and online retailers are allowed to engage in commercial activity involving firearms and ammunition on Facebook, e.g. Offering a gun for sale, as long as all applicable laws and regulations are followed. Well, it may not come as a surprise to you that I've got a certificate here. Certificate of Registration as a Firearms Dealer. So for those of you perhaps in the US, that's the equivalent of being an FFL 07, 08 and possibly one of the other ones as well. Um, I can import, export, I can manufacture firearms but um, I can't advertise them on Facebook so even though their own rules say that now they're a commercial organisation they're entitled to do as they please but what galls me is that they state one thing and they really clearly don't mean it they're saying that um, so that they can be argue, oh no, 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 that's fine, as long as it's a legitimate business, but actually they don't want it at all. So even though I've got a legitimate business, can't do it. So what I thought to do was, um, then, we get, then we get to the difficulties of dealing with YouTube. So with YouTube, I can't put in the, you know the old link in the description below? Yeah, no, no link in the description below because I can't put a link to the gun room in the description below, not allowed. But I can stand and talk about guns. Um, so, if I had prepared myself slightly better with this old sign that used to hang up outside the shop, you might have to use your own um, search engine. Well, there we go, search engine. Have a look at that and then you can find it. Otherwise, um, this isn't an advertisement, so I'm not going to put any prices. I'm just going to show you some things I've got here that might be of interest. A Winchester 1897, which as you've seen is a slam fire capable shotgun. So, as we cycle the action, if you keep your finger on the trigger, bang, 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 it will keep going rather than, generally, they have a disconnector so that you have to take your finger off the trigger then you fire it, then you cycle it, then you fire it. But with the Winchester 1897, you can, in theory, how well it works in practice, other people have done videos on, I'm not, certainly not going to do one in the shop, but the hammer will keep falling, and it will keep firing. This one has got a restricted magazine, so this is available in the UK as a Section 2 firearm, so... Um, on a shotgun certificate and if you wished there are um, 
some bits and pieces, including this with a bayonet lug on it to make it into um, something a bit more like the trench gun, the combat shotgun of the First World War that the uh, US used in um, on the continent of Europe. I then went on to use elsewhere, they used them in the Second World War as well. But uh, the, the US ones had an 18 inch barrel. In the UK this with an 18 inch barrel would become section 5 prohibited weapon. But uh, trying to make sense of any firearms legislation anywhere is generally difficult isn't it? It uh, all comes down to numbers. So it would have been about that long. However I'm pretty sure that it could be uh, arranged. In the UK this would need a 24 inch barrel. Um, so this could be made up. I was going to do it for a customer but um, in the end he changed his mind and then decided he didn't want it anymore. So what my scheme was for this was to use this bayonet lug, this is a reproduction item, um, have laser cut a new heat shield and then metal the whole thing together so that it looked the part but it was 24 inches long and with the restricted magazine could then be held on an ordinary shotgun certificate here. In the UK shotgun certificates um, they don't cover all shotguns but they cover most shotguns and the shotguns they don't cover are essentially shotguns with a magazine capacity of more than two rounds um, or shotguns that have got a barrel shorter than uh, shorter than 24 inches there's, there's various other little details as well but um, those are, princi those are the principal aspects of, of what Arnold covered and firearms of that nature that fall into that category but are still a shotgun fall under firearms legislation. Of course shotguns are firearms but there's two distinctions. The distinctions of those are for historic reasons of firearms legislation following the First World War and whilst they just wanted lots of people to go around and be armed to go and um, fight the powers that be on the continent um, then all of a sudden no 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 we don't want anybody armed so let's let's take all their guns off them uh, which um, seems to be a fairly common theme worldwide convenient when you can when you when you need an armed force but um, afterwards you otherwise. So let's see what else there is. If your home hasn't got one of these it ought to have. This is a Greener GP, a Martini Action shotgun. So again using one of these drill rounds. Um, this is from a company called Maglo. I don't generally keep them on the shelf. But they're not here as a product. They're just I just bought some because I needed them. So, martini action. Push off the safety, it's automatic safety. Bring it up. And how much fun is that on the range? Loads, in my view. These are also takedowns, so you can perhaps see it there. I'm trying to do this as a quick video, it's not going to be very quick. But you undo that. Push the lever back and then you can unscrew and remove the barrel. You get the idea. Most of the later ones just have um, a screwdriver slot there. Well it's designed so that it would take an old penny. But um, this is a very early one that's got um, a takedown lever. 
So that's quite a nice thing that uh, might appeal to some of you. After that I'm going to go and do um, as a cutaway of some of the bits and pieces. So um, other things that uh, might be of interest, it's a short magazine Lee Enfield. But it's not any short magazine Lee Enfield because it's in 22 rimfire. And it's not some lash up, since you might argue that it was, but it's, um, it's one that was built as a training rifle, converted, see if you can see that. So it's a proper conversion and they did a couple of things, they changed the bolt head and firing pin because of course it needs to be offset for 2-2 rim fire and they removed the magazine spring so the magazine is just left as an empty shell and a number of people have said well where's the proper magazine for it but that's how they that's how they did them and in practice you would just feed your rounds individually open the bolt and collect the empties in the empty magazine shell so historically that's correct the barrels were done with a process called Parker rifling which involved uh, soldering in a 2-2 rimfire calibre bore um, into, into the bored out 303 rifle. I think you can imagine that after the First World War there was no shortage of SMLEs knocking around. So they had plenty to go at. process was of doing the barrel was called Parker rifling because it was developed by a company called um, by that point called Parker Hale and there were two there was AG Parker and AJ Parker this was the AG Parker which um, made, uh, it took on a chap by the name of Hale and became Parker Hale who were known until fairly recently when they were bought out by a company called John Rothery and um, I think it's just, it's just really a brand name now but um, there we go so yeah one of those if you wanted a 2-2 rimfire Lee Enfield that's a fairly nice example the armoury butt disc has been replaced with something that somebody's had engraved with their initials but you could change that if you wished and it's got the correct sling for the period and if you're 2-2 rimfire small ball range is a very dangerous environment you could even fit a bayonet. There we go. It's got the um, standard sights which will probably take you out to any range you could imagine that 2-2 um, that rimfire will reach. But they're not going to be calibrated to the original standard. So, an SMLE. 2-2, which is correctly a rifle number four at that period. Some of you have watched the channel before, I recall I've I used to make nice videos and try and do entertaining stuff and it'll all be edited nicely, it's not going to happen today. Um, I'm just trying to show you some stuff. So here we have a Browning 525 which you could use for either sort of pigeon. This pigeon or this pigeon. Perfectly good for either. Um, or for going out and any other sort of general purpose shooting. Quite a nice piece. It's the uh, 
I think this is the base model. Let's take a look. What have we got? Uh, sporter grade. So there we are, sporter grade. Try and show you some close ups of what you get on sporter grade. And as you can see, it's cased. Now, here's a nice little setup. Look, it's an auto pecking clay pigeon decoy arrangement. Well, it amused me, but it doesn't take much to amuse me nowadays. Uh, so, uh, something suitable for either clays or pigeons or Maybe they mated clay pigeons. So, um, Remington Versamax self loading shotgun. Um, clearly, it's in its case, disassembled. I could assemble it, but um, assembling it isn't going to be terribly exciting. So, I'll save you the uh, tedium of having to listen to me and watch me doing something mind wateringly dull. Um, apparently, these some of these got quite um, um, a bit of a mixed reputation mixed, maybe not even that good, uh, when they first came out as being unreliable. This one, um, I actually, because I was concerned about this, it, it, they took them off the market. The, the finer details I'm sure you'll find on a search somewhere, but um, it seemed that some of them, not the entire production run, but some of them, uh, gave problems with certain cartridges. I've had this out and uh, given it a thorough test, and one of the key things of the design was that it would take a light or a heavy cartridge and run perfectly happily with it. Um, I've run these down to even 21 gram um, bird shot, you know, for clay shot on sevens or seven and a halves. And it, even on those sort of very light loads it worked absolutely fine. Uh, I think I put, put some punchier, heavier loads in as well. So Remington Versamax. Um, it's it's used. The main use it's had is me testing it so that I could be confident of putting it out the door and it um, being um, reliable. It's got a whole set of um, adjusting little fillets and pieces with it. So in here are spacers so you can adjust the stock for length of pull and as I recall, you can rearrange it so that it's left or right hand. Of course, the gun itself is going to carry on ejecting to the right, but um, that might be convenient to you. Can't really see it too well in that picture, but I believe that can be done with it. What have we got? Instructions for adjustable length of pull and. What else has it got? Uh, some tools, some chokes. So quite a nice setup. It's got some other little gizzit in there. Oh, inserts, little coloured inserts to go in the in the sides. And one of those. So that's quite a nice thing. I'll put that on the uh, shop website as well. The other thing I'm doing in the background is trying to just take some trying to take some photographs of stuff. I'll just show you that you can see that that's in quite good order. But um, trying to take some photographs so that I can put them on the website. Because at least then the website, as long as you've done a nice little bit of googling, note the spelling. For those of you not familiar with it, 
you can then find what we've got for sale. Because there's all sorts of bits and pieces here. This is just what's in the front of the gun room. And I'll maybe drag some of those out. Out the back in the armoury store, there's all sorts of other bits and pieces. did until a few weeks ago have a Frenchie Spaz 12 in here. But sadly that's, uh, well not sadly, I needed to sell it. Ultimately I'm in the business of trying to sell some guns so it's always a good day when we can do that. There we are. Yes, yeah, so um, sitting in here there's another um, greener GP. Uh, it's a bit more money than the first one. I didn't, I'm not putting prices because there is YouTube selling. They don't like it and it gets pulled. Um, pretty sure they've all got armed security at their headquarters in the US though. Figure that one out. There, there's things that I've forgotten. Man. <laughs> Use shotguns. Key thing for you, if you're in the UK and you haven't got a shotgun certificate because to uh, buy a shotgun or other. shotguns are on a sort of slightly um, slightly less constrained set of requirements than other firearms so if you need a shotgun certificate or a firearm certificate and you fancy something that you've seen here and you haven't got one of those um, essentially for a shotgun certificate the requirements are that you're not mad not bad and um, you've got somewhere to lock it up. For a firearm certificate, requirements are those, so not mad, not bad, somewhere to lock it up, and also you need to demonstrate that you've got a use for it, so if you want um, a rifle for target shooting you need to be in a target shooting club. If you want it for deer stalking you need to be able to go have some land that you can go deer stalking on where there are some deer and rabbit shooting the equivalent and so on. So those, however, key thing, and I, I ought to do a, a video on how to go about those, but I haven't done, but if you'd like me to, put something in the comments below. Do some, do all the share and like, and that sort of supposedly helps. If you'd like me to do that, say so, and I'll try and put something together on how to apply for your shotgun certificate. But it's only about 80 quid, and as long as you haven't got a criminal record, um, you're not mad, um, or let's say a drug user, or married to a mad criminal drug user and living with one, generally you will, you're going to get your shotgun certificate. But you need somewhere to lock it up, so that, well, that just means buy a steel cabinet, bolt it to the wall. Um, happily give guidance on all that, and probably will get round to doing a, a nice presentational video that's a show you how. Um, otherwise, uh, please do, do share this. If you came to us from the Facebook page, please try to share at least the fact that we've got the video because I can't share individual detailed pictures of guns with prices. Whether I can share them without prices is hard to determine. Sometimes they go up and they stay up, other times you know, the, the wrath of Zuckerberg comes down. I'm pretty sure we'll also have some armed security. Give me your views on that. But um, there we are. In the meantime, I'll just um, say goodbye with my little friend and um, hopefully see you down at, um, down at the gun room sometime. Or give us a call. Take care, thanks. Bye. <laughs>